Welcome to Next Radio with Broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people. So yeah, when I was asked to come and talk at Next Radio, I thought, brilliant, I'll come and share some of what I've learned during my time hosting the XFM Manchester Breakfast Show. Didn't quite realise that today would be on the day I'm officially no longer hosting the XFM Manchester Breakfast Show. It turned into a pretty public job interview, didn't it? So, uh, hi, programme directors, managing editors, I'm Tim Cocker, here's my CV. There you go, five and a half happy, successful years at XFM. <laughs> that second one is a fact, I'll prove it in the pub, and uh, of course, very important these days. There you go. <laughs> so, joking aside, what I would like to talk to you about today is video and its use in radio. It's something that's become a massive part of my role as a presenter, and... I'd like to offer some of the conclusions I've come to and challenge some of what we do. But any one of us in this room here could become famous due to one piece of video. So much so that we could end up, even theoretically, on an episode of South Park. That is the Numa Numa guy, one of the first viral video hits, and it changed his life. And what it could do for our radio presenters and stations. Well, just before Christmas last year, a piece of video content that I made for my show with the intention to try and grow its audience went viral. And it's massively shaped my thoughts on this whole topic, so I think it's important that you see it. So to set this up briefly, this is me testing how grateful my children were going to be when it came to opening their Christmas presents. And what's happening soon? Yeah, and Christmas! It's Christmas. nearly Christmas, yeah! And, and guess Santa Claus is going to come! Yeah, that's right, Santa Claus is going to come. Now, what is it you really want, Louis? Toy Blade Team you want a Ben 10 watch? What do you want, Connie? Um, Barbie, Barbie Princess and Ken King. So you want Barbie Princess and Ken the King, <laughs> and you want a Ben 10 watch. Well, because you've been really good, I'm going to let you open one Christmas present early. What is it? What is it? Do you, what do you think it's going to be, Louie? Maybe a Ben 10 watch. Well. Maybe. Uh, can you help me, Daddy? Yeah. I Daddy, can't you open it. it. So, on December the 13th last year, I got contacted by a friend of mine on Facebook who was in Australia and said, Tim, is that your kids on the front page of Reddit? I clicked on the link, looked at it, and there was my video, my kids, and at that point it had 38,000 views. And I should probably point out at this point, I actually made this video in 2011, and you can tell that because if you just look really, really closely, you'll see I filmed the whole thing in portrait mode, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I didn't know any better then. But I'd used it on my show, and it had racked up a whopping 1,500 views. Fast forward three years, almost to the day, and just in a few days, it got over 5 million views, and that is just on YouTube alone. There was millions more on Facebook. And it turns out what happened is a listener had been going down a YouTube wormhole, looking at some of my videos, found it, shared it, and the next thing you know, it's the top trending article on BuzzFeed, it's being used by other radio shows all around the world as content. And by the time it got to half a million views, there was even a company in Los Angeles who'd licensed the video. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> and it's massive, given me a massive lesson in trying to make video content that goes viral. And I'm going to share this with you, special audience, so I will share this. Feel free to make notes. Don't bother. <laughs> Seriously, don't bother. <laughs> trying to make video content that might go viral. You're buying the internet's version of a lottery ticket. It's so unpredictable. I mean, could you predict this? Oh my God, it's full on. Double rainbow all the way across the sky. <laughs> oh my God. Now the double rainbow guy, um, that lay dormant with no views for months and then became a big viral hit. But even if you could predict that, you then can't predict what the internet will do with it. Double rainbow all the way. Oh 
they're the Gregory brothers who do all the auto-tune songs. I really wanted them to do one of my kids, but they never did. So the next time you're in a meeting in your radio station and the talk of making a video comes up and someone says, because they always do, oh, yeah, do it, it'll go viral. What you need to do is turn to them and say, okay, well, what are you going to do to try and guarantee that that will happen? And hopefully, with any luck, you'll get a response that they obviously got in Radio 1 when they talked to the drive time team and said, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll shut down some roads in London. We'll give you a police escort. We'll get you a camera crew, camera crews and a director, lighting and a massive truck. And in it, we'll put one of the most famous people on planet Earth in a car who's up for a bit of a laugh. She's got a few hours free, whatever. She'll kick back and do a video for you. And then I will guarantee you millions of views. But do those millions of views mean that that video was a success? Well, in the case of my video, trying to build my audience, I'd say it was a failure. 60% of the views were in America. Only roughly 5% of the views were in the UK. And by the way, next Radio 2016, can I put in an early request, please? Can someone do a session on how to crack the difficult Tajikistan market? Because I failed. <laughs> but I did manage 5% in the UK. But of those, how many are in Greater Manchester where I could get credit via Rajar? And of those, how many of them knew when and where and how to listen? I didn't make a big deal of it in my video. And had I done... Do you think they'd have shared it in quite the same way? So in striving to make video content that could go viral, are we losing our way? Well, if we are, then I think this might be the culprit. I'll hold my hands up and say, I love the experience. It was brilliant. Hit and refresh, seeing the numbers go up, all the lovely comments about how cute my kids were. And also, don't underestimate how interesting that was for a radio person to see real-time data. It was amazing, and it was absolutely fascinating. But a big view count isn't the point, and the connection we make with our audiences, as I'm sure we all agree, is the point. Maybe the one thing that this viral video experience did do is it actually just gave a bit of validation to me and said, yeah, you know what, Tim, that was a good idea, and that was a good bit of shareable content, but it could quite easily still be sat on the internet with just 1,500 views. Now, as a, well, I'll label myself a content maker, I've, I've analysed what video content I've made and what I see, and I see two traps that we quite often fall into. And the first one of those is we have a great idea for a piece of video content, and then we sort of neglect the radio. And I think this will ring true, and I also think this is happening more and more at the moment. How many times do you see, or hear, or hear I should say, a radio presenter using the radio to talk on the radio about the fact there's a video online? Or describing a video that's online? And what's the phrase, a picture paints a thousand words? Well, do you need a thousand words to paint that picture? And if so, how interesting is that? If you need a video to complete the story that you're telling on the radio, I'd argue you're doing the radio wrong. Because radio has always had a visual element, and that's the pictures that we paint in people's minds with the stories that we tell. So the second trap that I think we fall into, so I'm just suddenly conscious there's the word ego above my head for ages. <laughs> I'm really not! Uh, the second trap we fall into, we have a great radio idea, film it, and think that's enough. And again, how many times have you been in this situation? You've got a guest coming in for an interview, got some great radio ideas, uh, you stick a camera on a tripod, much like this one, and film it, put it online, and expect people to watch it. And it might be okay, it might even be good, but it's rarely, rarely great. So I've taken to looking at video like this, subsequent to this viral video, and subsequent to analysing my own and other people's content, Treat it like an extra link. And when you think of it like that, it's amazing how differently you approach video content. No longer are you trying to crowbar the radio and the video where they don't really need to be. Forget about the numbers, forget about the ego, and get back to that basic, knowing your audience and making a connection with them. And there's a really good high-profile example of this, and it's Jimmy Fallon. Now, you might think I'm going to start bringing up some of the content he does on his Tonight Show in America. Among some of the most shared videos online, racking up millions of views, things like Justin Timberlake's history of rap and Emma Stone lip-syncing. But that's not what I'm bringing up. Something else that Jimmy Fallon does, much lesser known, but a little insight and maybe could be inspiration for all of us. And I mean, if you're Radio 1, I get that maybe the sort of content you aspire to make is that kind of content. But Jimmy Fallon also has a YouTube channel called Ask Jimmy, where he sits in his office with a camera phone, very lo-fi, and answers some viewers' questions. Like this, where he's been asked, how's your dog getting on with your newborn daughter? Um, totally protective, loved her this morning. Um, we were feeding her, and Gary walked up, and she was like, 
like, I'm cool, like, don't, don't worry about me. And then quickly looked over and, went, and licked her head. It was really cute because she, she smelled so good and everyone would like to lick, lick her head. But uh, Gary gets away with it because she's a dog. That's Jimmy Fallon in a way you never get to see him. And you can't help but like him a little bit more after you've seen it. And as I said, if you're Radio 1 or you know, a, a network and you're creating content, I get you might want to get the stars in really polished, beautiful looking videos. But that, that is unique content for an audience that fosters a personal connection. And that is how you build an audience. Or one big way you build an audience, that is how you build a tribe. And I tried to adopt this own approach myself and I've tried to pick out a video that's the most lo-fi and the most basic I could have done. Uh, and this is just something I did in my studio uh, about a month ago. And as you'll see, there's a word that's used, which means if you, even if I wanted to put it on air, I couldn't. Hello, I'm Tim. I'm Jim. We're from The Breakfast Show. And it's, what time is it? It's half past 11. It's Wednesday morning. We're preparing for tomorrow's Breakfast Show. And we're going through a load of texts and tweets for our Say What feature. Say what? which is where we look at misheard lyrics that you have misheard. And that you cannot unhear. You, yeah, once you hear these, you can't unhear. We've had, we've had loads of people getting in touch. We're going through them, but there's one we're not going to be able to use on the show because of the language, but it's too good not to share. So good. It is good. <laughs> I think it's my favourite one, yeah. So um, props to you, Neil Putley. I don't know if you can see that, but he says it's Beastie Boys' song, Intergalactic, and he's talking about where the robot voice comes in, and it sounds like he's saying... I'm having a big shit. 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 Which isn't the lyrics, but have a listen, and it really does sound like it. <laughs> I'm having a big shit. I'm having a big shit. I'm having a big shit. Amazing. You can't unhear that. Neil Putley, well done. And we'll see you again for... Say what? Now, I'm very, very aware that radio station bosses, network owners are very keen on these big stars, high production values, beautifully shot videos, and I do totally get that. But I'd argue that actually does more to know my audience and love my tribe and foster those personal feelings than some of the video content that I've made that takes much more effort and much more technology. And that's what it all comes down to for me. It's that, it's that personal connection. What was, what was interesting about that is every subsequent time I'd play the song on the radio, despite never referring to it on the radio, you know, you already know what happened. I get loads of messages referring to the video. That was me knowing my audience, loving my audience a bit more, and loving my tribe. And I'll just finish by saying this. Radio, just like the world we live in, I think, is as polished and as staged and as formatted as it needs to be. And what I love about radio, and I'm sure this is something we all share, is that there are those personal moments where you have real connection with the audience that you're talking to or with. And in radio, we're not after 15 minutes of fame. We are in the business of getting people to like us a little bit more, and video can help with that. Now, in time-honored viral video fashion, I just would like to end by saying, play me out, keyboard cap. I'm Tim Cocker, um, I'll see you in the pub. Thank you very much.